In this video, we're going to be talking about uncertainty in measurement and what exactly is uncertainty. So what this is going to really get into is looking at significant figures and how we uh, use measurements made in the lab and or given information and making sure we core to the correct units and decimal places, in this case, significant figures in your final answer. So uh, significant figures refers to the digits that were measured in the experiment. So when you are in a lab or even in lecture, you oftentimes are going to be making measurements or you're going to be given specific information from the from the lab. Now, in that information, the numbers that you're looking at are measured by, you know, a graduate cylinder or balance or burette. So these instruments, these tools that you use in the lab, they all have their own accuracies and precisions. And so that takes into consideration that you have to also focus on the significant figures in relation to which of those tools that you use. Because what you don't want to do is when you make a report, your answers are, and your results are are overstated or understated by the accuracy of your instrument. So your significant figures are really important and there's certain specific rules that you have to follow in order to make sure that you your answer is correct in the sense of the measurements that's, that were made. So you have to pay attention to the significant figures and, and so that way we don't overstate the accuracy of your answers. Now Two definitions, so accuracy and precision. So accuracy refers to the proximity of a measurement to the true value of a quantity, and precision refers to the proximity of those measurements compared to each other. So accuracy is it's like hitting a bullseye on a dartboard. Precision is getting your darts within the same proximity of each other. Now, if you can do both, then you're gonna have good accuracy and good precision. If you can't get close to the bullseye, but you can get your darts close together, then you have good precision, but poor accuracy. And if you just completely can't do any of it, then obviously you have poor accuracy and poor precision. So that's where we want to make sure our six figs are where they need to be in your final answer. So first set of rules here are the rules of zero. The first rule says that all non-zero digits are significant. So if you have a number like 101, all right, so the two ones are gonna count, but we don't know what to do with a zero yet. That will come in the next rule. But if we have a number like 111, now that is three sig figs. If you have a number, let's just say five, well, that's one sig figs. All you have to do is count your whole numbers. Now, the, this, the, the rule for the, the zero in between the two numbers here so if the zeros in between two, two sig figs themselves are going to be significant. So 101, the zeros in between the two whole numbers, so it makes it count. So that would be an example of three sig figs. If you had 1001, that would be four sig figs. If you had a number like this, it doesn't matter that the zeros where they're placed because they're in the middle. And since they're in the middle, they're going to count. So this one's one, two, three, four, six, six figs. So as long as the zeros are in between two whole numbers, then they're going to count. Now, it's when they're on the outside, that's when you have to be careful and making sure you know what you're able to use. So zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's simple. So if you have zero, 100, and let's see one zero one thousand one so in this example here the zero is not in the front it's not going to count but the two zeros in the middle will so therefore that's four sig figs it's like going to the bank you want to put a hundred dollars in a deposit when you write your deposit slip you don't write zero one hundred decimal zero zero you write one hundred because there's no reason in writing a zero in front now if you have a decimal place like this right here all right, the zeros in the front here do not count. So this would be three sig figs. So this is, so this is another example. Now, in this case, you have to have the zeros in the front. 
and but they don't count they're just placeholders in this case so zero is at the end of a significant r is significant if a decimal place is written in a number so if i have a hundred versus a hundred decimal place so this one only counts as one sig fig where this one counts as three sig figs because it has a decimal place the decimal place is what makes your zeros count especially if they lie to the right of a whole number now like we said earlier if the de if your zero is in between two whole numbers then they're going to count automatically but you got to pay attention to the decimal place if there is one now if so if i have a number like this all right so again the zeros in the front do not count this zero does count because it's sandwiched and this zero counts because it's to the right of a whole number or, or to the right of a decimal place so uh and that yeah so it's to the right of the whole number so this would be four sig figs here all right and you still have your decimal place which is here and all the numbers to the right of the first number would count as it's going to configure So we have a number like this. Well, again, the zeros in front do not count, but the zeros to the right of the whole number do count. So this would be two sig figs. Now, just a few more practice problems here. So letter A is 0 0.030. So the zeros in the front do not count. The zero to the right does, so that's two sig figs. Letter B. 4.050 well there's a decimal place all zeros to the right and there's a sandwich to your so that's four sig figs letter c none of those count because they're to the left and there's only one sig fig here and the last letter d that is three sig figs because there's a decimal place and it's to the right so that's how we count sig figs now, the next thing we want to do is we want to pay attention to significant figures in calculations. So, sig figs, there's two different rules here. The first rule is when addition or subtraction is performed, answers are rounded to the least significant decimal place. The second rule says when multiplication or division is performed, answers are rounded to the nearest, uh, the least number of significant figures. So, there's a little bit of a difference here. So, if we were to do, let's say 10.0 plus 1.00, well, the answer is obvious. It's going to be 11. Now, what you have to do is you have to look at the fact that you have only one decimal place here and you have two decimal places here. So we want to report to the least number of decimal places in this case because that's what the rule tells us. So we would have 11.0. Now, if we took the same number and multiplied by this, so in, in this example here, well, this is three sig figs, this is three sig figs. So what you want to do is when you do 10 times one, well, that's obviously 10, but the answer needs to be the three sig figs, so it'd be 10.0 for your answer. So there's, there's a little bit of a difference here. So when you're doing the multiplication division, it's, it's a little bit easier because all you have to do is count. I'm going to do another one here for you. All right, so this one is, uh, so you, you count your sig figs. So that's two sig figs. This was three sig figs. So your final answer needs to be two significant figures. Well, in this case, 10 times two is 20. And so you'll just put 20 with a decimal place beside of it. All right, and that gets you your two sig figs. Now you do the same thing for division as you do for multiplication. And you always, for the addition and subtraction, you always report to the least number of decimal places. So another example here is where you take 110.5 times 0 0.048. So you have uh, the, the 110.5 is four sig figs 
and the point zero four eight is two sig figs. So your calculator is going to give you five point three zero four, but your final answer needs to be rounded to two sig figs. So five point three would be the correct answer for that. So we have a few examples here. So you have 2.19 times 4.2. So this is the multiplication rule. So this is three sig figs, two. So this is gonna be your answer here. 4.311 divided by 0 0.07. That's one sig fig. This is four. Your final answer needs to be one sig fig. So this is gonna be your answer for that one. Now, this is two, two, three, you need your final answer to be two sig figs. So this one's a little bit different, but you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to multiply and then you're gonna have to divide. You can do it in parentheses on top and bottom if you want, or you can just do it in parts. If you do it correctly, what you end up with is, so we need two sig figs. You should end up with 11. Now the answer was 11.288889. So, and that just rounds down to 11 to have your accuracy. All right, check. so good. All right, now distance subtraction, we talked about that earlier. So here's a couple problems we can practice. So letter A, you have two decimal places here. Uh, in the first number you have one you have zero so your answer does not need any decimal places so it's going to be here uh, number one is your answer the next one you have three uh, decimal places and then the last one you have one so that's going to be your answer all right so some other examples that, that you should work and practice with. These are all a good problems to just um, work on. Sorry about that. Got a little excited. So uh, 2.045 plus 34.1 gives me 36.145. So this, you need to stop at the first decimal place. So that's going to be 36.1 for your answer. Now the next one is there are no decimal places in the first number. So you need to stop at 79. And I'm just going to keep it simple here. Uh, your calculator would have got 79.35. But just rounding it to the correct sig figs is 79. And then 2 times 34 gives me 68. And that's it is what it is there's no so it says two decimal places or two sig figs not so you have two sig figs and this first number and then this one's five so you you leave it to suit to, so that one's fine so two sig figs is good now don't forget your order of operations here to so two plus two is four now the addition rule least sig least number of decimal places so it's going to be four point zero divided by thirty four so your final answer needs to be two sig figs. So it's gonna be 0 0.18 for that answer. Now the, the, the next one is 0 0.345 divided by 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, so you've got three sig figs here and you have two. This does not count as a sig fig, but it does part count as part of the problem. So in this problem, what you need to do is uh, so type it in you end up with 1.5 times 10 to the ninth so that's correct for two decimal or two sig figs now the last one here is five times a thousand so that's, that's five thousand divided by two which gives me 2500 all right you need your you need it to be rounded to a whole number well not really a whole number but to just one significant figure so we're gonna round up to 3,000 so that would be your answer do not put a decimal place that'll that'll make it incorrect all right so I hope you guys have learned something with six figs and how to calculate and, and counting six figs and keeping consistent thanks for watching